know Christ, a television ministry of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Here is your host, Rev. Jeff Peterson. Well, today we have the second part of our series on sharing our faith. And today the focus is on evangelism. Evangelism means proclaiming good news. And so we like to hear good news, and, and we love the people who uh, come and share that good news. And so as we think about what is the good news, what is the good news that we have to proclaim? That Jesus Christ, who is crucified on a cross, is arisen from the dead. That's the good news that we hear, and that is the good news that we share. And whenever I read from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the Apostle Paul, I can, just, I can just feel his enthusiasm, his passion. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives within me. Jesus Christ, the risen Savior, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, dwells within us. Now that's really the incarnation of our Lord in that he now sets up his presence, or he now has his presence uh, within us. That God no longer, God doesn't dwell in stained glass windows, or he's not a statue, or, or anything, but rather, where does God set up shop? He sets up shop within your heart. How precious that is. And so at this time, I want to read the good news. And it comes from John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And I'll also read verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And so that's the good news in a nutshell. And that would also be God's mission, that God's in the mission to save the world, that he's in the mission to save us. But then we also hear, though, that but for those who do not believe in Jesus, that there is condemnation. And so along with the good news, there is also, in a sense, bad news. And so that's the thing, is that humanity all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the Apostle Paul teaches us as we read in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And so what that means is that because of the fall of humanity, we have fallen, we are broken, and our relationship with God has been separated. But now Jesus, who has died on a cross, has arisen from the dead. That's the good news, that in believing in him and receiving his life, that we have eternal life. And so as we think about when does eternal life begin, well, it begins when we come to faith. You know, that oftentimes for most of us comes at our baptism. And it's at that point, then, that we begin eternal life. And so when death comes, it's now a transition from this life in this world to living a life in heaven. But we always will be with the Lord now and, forever, now and forevermore. God is eternal. His love is eternal. Jesus is the personification, the embodiment of love, of God's love. And so it's, so God is eternal. Jesus is eternal. And as we live with him, that his eternal spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes and dwells within us. And so that we live with God now and forevermore. Because a lot of times, you know, I hear people say that, well, it's when you die. You know, God, you know, religion and God and all of that has just to do with when you die. But as far as this life, that's my life. It's my life to deal with. Well, that's how, you know, how the devil wants it, is that you live your selfish life. You live your life for yourself. But 
God's desire is that we always live for him. And that that life begins uh, when, when we've been redeemed, when we have been reborn as children of God. And so that life begins and it grows. And we are continually being, so we are redeemed, we are regenerated, we are being transformed, that we are living our lives, turning from ourself and our own, in our, in our sinful ways, now to turning, having a life of being in relationship with God and growing and living in his principles, living in the covenant of our baptisms. And so this word that we have is called repentance. Repentance means to turn from our old life, our old selfish life, the life of death, now to a life of eternity, a life of God. And so that is the good news. And so when we think about, well, does God condemn people? Well, when we read this, is that no, it's God's mission, it's God's intention to bring us to eternal life. That's God's goal. That's God's goal for you, is to have a relationship with you that lasts now and forevermore. But if we reject this, then we continue to live the life of what I just said, that you know, all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. And then when we read in, uh, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and the wages of sin is death. And so we stand, we condemn ourselves then. I mean, the gracious gift of life has been offered to us, that we would receive that in thanksgiving. But apparently there are those who... Um, when God offers his gracious gift of salvation, they do not want to receive it. They want to live their life the way that they want to live. And the original sin is to be God. This is my life. I'm going to do as I want. I'm not going to have anybody, including God, uh, telling me what to do. And so a lot of people live with this attitude. It's very prevalent. And that's what we struggle with, with the humanity, is to say, you know, to, to give to give up myself for God, to repent, to turn. And so at this time, I am going to read from uh, Matthew chapter uh, 25, uh, verses 31 through uh, 33. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in, hev in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And so what Jesus is saying is that there will be a judgment day, that he will come again. And he is the one who was going to judge uh, those who are in him and those who are not, based on those who receive him. And so here again, the good news is that Christ has come to save us. The bad news is that, well, if we don't receive this salvation, that we have to understand that we live apart from God. And that really is death. And that when we do physically die, that we will have a second death, and that will be condemnation in hell. I mean, those are the very words of Jesus. I'm not making this up. And so I, I would think that we would all want to receive uh, our Lord and to have a relationship with God, because that is the purpose for which God had, has originally intended for us. And so we look at life, we can either have it where we are living life in, in death, apart from God, or we can have life in relationship with God. The one, lives, the one leads to condemnation, the other one leads to eternal life. As we read in, as I read in, or in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 2, or as I think about Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. 
in, many, in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go to prepare a place for you. In other words, God always wants to be with us, and he always wants to provide a place where we can always live in his loving and secure arms, to live in relationship with him, knowing that, that he is our Heavenly Father and we are his children, and that is always the best life. But that's why there's eternal life, because God desires it. God desires it for us. He wants us to be with us. He wants us to be with him now and forevermore. But then as we think about you know, what is written in, in Revelation, especially as I thumb through and get to uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse uh, 14, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So do you see where we have our choice? God offers us his salvation in Jesus. And when we receive it, then we go to eternal life. But if we reject it, then we have to understand that then we have we brought condemnation on ourselves, And that is where we are thrown into the lake of fire. Or in other words, that lake is known as, as hell. And so that's where we wonder, well, where did this all start? And why is there hell? Why is there sin? Why are there problems in the world? Why do we need to be redeemed? Well, it all starts with, with the devil. And we wonder, well, who is the devil? How did the devil become the devil? Well, the devil was an archangel, an archangel, meaning that he was like a lead angel. But he rebelled. And I'm going to read this little story here from Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verses 12 through 15, that helps us to understand just what had happened here. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the, the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the second mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. So in other words, this archangel called the morning star, he all of a sudden one day wanted to ascend way above the heavens, to be above God, to, in a sense, take over the throne. And God wouldn't have anything to do with that and brought say, uh, the, uh, this angel down, now is called Satan, uh, to the depths of the earth where there is condemnation. And so it, the devil then now has gotten, he, he works to get, Angels to be demons, apparently he got a third of them to go along with him. And now it is the devil's goal to, to try to destroy your life. First of all, you know, the main thing is to, to separate you from God. To make you believe that, that God doesn't exist at all. And if God does exist, that God is the one who's wheeling all this bad stuff and I hear so many people that they talk about, well, I don't believe that there is a God. And then I hear there's lots of people who say, well, God is doing all this bad stuff. He's done this to me and he's done that to me. And, and that's just what the devil wants us to believe. Where no, God is good and God wants to, to bring his life and his salvation to us. And I'm ever reminded what Jesus had to say in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so, no, God is not the one that's coming to bring all this awful stuff to me. And, and, and here again, I've known people where they've had a lot of awful stuff, and they just will say that God has done all of it to them. And I just think, okay, what really are you saying here? You know, is God that evil? I mean, is God that bad? 
And they just say, well, really, who you're describing here is the devil. The devil masquerades around like an angel of light. The devil wants us to believe that, that God is the one who is creating all these problems. But ultimately, to know, though, that the devil wants to destroy our lives. The devil is not our friend. You know, the devil is doing everything that he can. He will slither into the very cracks of our life, and, and he will create problems and he will bring us down in every way that we can. And we are pretty easy prey for the devil unless we you know, put on the whole armor of God. To understand that, that God is our strength, that he's more powerful than the devil. Just as powerful as darkness is, there's one, powerful, one, there's one power that is greater than darkness, and that is light. But that's where we can't take God for granted, but we need to pray every day. Praying that the Holy Spirit come upon us. Praying every day that the Lord will be our refuge and our strength. You know, I remember being on a youth trip so many years ago. And while I was on the youth trip, I was traveling in a bus with other youth who were on the trip. And I thought, well, since I'm on a youth trip, it only makes sense that I would read my Bible. So I started reading my Bible. And I, was, and I remember I was reading the Gospel of Matthew. But before I had read the Gospel, or before I was reading Matthew, I had read the newspaper and I was reading about all this bad stuff. You know, one story after another going, oh. But then when I read the, the Bible, Matthew, it was such good news. And being a high schooler, without anybody instructing me, I could see, having read the newspaper, and now... Reading the Gospel of Matthew, I just kept thinking, now, if the people here in the newspaper would have read this in the Gospel of Matthew or would have done that, this story wouldn't have been here. And then the same thing with the next story and the next story. I thought pretty soon the newspaper would be blank pages if people were reading the Bible. That we would know better, that we'd be receiving strength and instruction and encouragement. And so when we think about, we got, there's bad news, but then there is also the good news. And like I was saying that, as I was reading the good news, it's like it can just erase all of the bad news. And bad news happens because we're not reading the good news. But when we do read the good news, that we can erase the bad news. That God forgives us of our sins. He washes all of our sins and iniquities away. And so I mentioned evangelism is sharing good news. And angels would share good news. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's what an angel is. An angel is a messenger. An angel is a messenger of the good news of God. An angel is a messenger of the gospel. And so when Jesus was born, it was the angel who proclaimed to the shepherds outside of Bethlehem, praising God and, and singing glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. And that's from Luke chapter 2. Verse 14, the angels chorus. And what good news that is being proclaimed to all the world that God has sent to us a Savior, Jesus. But when Jesus was crucified, he was laid in a tomb, and the women uh, came to the tomb early on that first Easter morning, found the tomb, you know, the stone rolled away from the tomb. The body of Jesus was not there, but there was an angel that would proclaim the good news, saying, you are looking for Jesus among the dead, but I want to tell you that Jesus is not here, but rather that Jesus is arisen. That's what the angel was proclaiming to the women who went to the tomb. And so they were hearing good news, and as they were filled with this good news, they then went and shared it with others. And I think about Mary, Mary Magdalene, as she was at the tomb, Jesus spoke, the risen Jesus spoke her name, 
And she went out. She was the first one to proclaim the good news of the resurrection as it's recorded in John chapter 20, verse 8. What did she? She went to the disciples and said, I have seen the Lord. And so the good news that went forth from that tomb in Jerusalem and has now been spreading throughout the world. And, and that is, you know, what Jesus had prophesied that, as we read in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, that the good news of salvation is going to spread into all of the world. And once it has gone into all the nations of the world, then he will come again. And so I would say that we are very close to having the good news of salvation go into all the nations of the world. You know, here again, you can talk to people that maybe know a little bit more about all this than myself, but I'm kind of hard-pressed to think about a place where the good news of the gospel has not been proclaimed in this world. But we have to continue to keep at it. And so now what, so as we hear the good news, as we hear the good news of the angel that was proclaimed you know, at Jesus' birth, and now it's proclaimed in his resurrection. But now Jesus is commissioning us to be the proclaimers of the good news. And so we call this a commissioning. That we take God's mission to go out and to save the world, and now he's calling us to say, but I want you to be my workers. I want you to go out into the world and to proclaim the good news. And so when we hear about one of these commissionings, we look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so that's where Jesus is telling uh, well, first of all, he sends the Holy Spirit. He's empowering uh, his, the believers with the Holy Spirit. And now they are to have the, the courage to go out and to proclaim the good news in Jerusalem and then in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so Jerusalem is where they were. That was the city of God. That was kind of the epicenter of, of religious life. And so it's from Jerusalem now that the good news is being sent forth. And so Judea and Samaria were, well, those were the regions that Jesus did so much ministry. And so it's going to be proclaimed there. But then from there, it will then start going to the ends of the earth. And how exciting it is to read church history and, and how the church of God and the good news of, the, of salvation in Jesus Christ has spread uh, into, all, into all of the world now. Another commissioning comes from Matthew chapter uh, 28, um, verses uh, 18 through 20. And here again, this is where Jesus, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And so we are to go out and we are to baptize, baptize in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, being baptized into Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection, that we receive the salvation life of God. And as we receive the salvation life of God, that we are now to go into the world and that we baptize. So as people are baptized, they are reborn as children of God. They're brought into the covenant uh, in a relationship with God. And then we instruct them. And so we baptize, and then we spend the rest of our lives being instructed, or that we instruct. Until that day comes when Jesus will return. But he says, but I will be with you always until the end of the age. And what he means is that I'm going to be giving to you the Holy Spirit. And so as we think about another commissioning, and that would be from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 17 through 21. This is where the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the spirit of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Okay, and so here again, in creation, everything was created, everything was good, uh, a good relationship that God had with Adam and Eve, with humanity, but then, Ad, but then the devil, who I talked about, came in, tempted Adam and Eve, saying, oh, you can have a better life, just uh, listen to me and, and follow me, and you can be your own God. And so that was the original temptation, and that became the original sin, is that Adam and Eve fell to that, saying, well, we don't want to be obedient to God when we can be God. And so that's what happened, the fall. Everything is broken. But now in Jesus Christ, that we are now in him a new creation. This old Adam, this old sin, this old life has passed away, and the new has come. That which was broken down has now been reconstructed. And that's what reconciliation is. Being, uh, having a re reconstructed relationship with God. But now we are to go out and to proclaim the good news so that we can now share this good news that we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We're not Jesus, but we share his good news so that all people can come to salvation. And that as we have reconciliation with God, that Jesus, who was the stone that the builders rejected, is now the cornerstone, that we have reconciliation, that we can now all be built upon his foundation, and that we can be reconciled with one another, that we can be reconstructed with each other, so to speak. And so I think about what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. And so we're not ashamed of the gospel, but rather we boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God working salvation in us. You have been watching To Know Christ with Rev. Jeff Peterson, pastor of the Lutheran Church of Peace in Platteville, Wisconsin. Thank you for watching and tune in again next week for To Know Christ.